I still find it super weird how we can actually automate biomass now. Because I can get the bio water coming in with the stone into the input of this fluid conditioner. This fluid conditioner sends out 90 items per minute, 30 of them being biomass and 60 being leaves. That comes onto a Mark II belt here. Wait, that's not a Mark II belt, it's a Mark I belt. Upgrade that belt. Have I done it with the others? Oh my god, is that one? No, that's that's fine over there. Oh my god, bitch, you bloody spoon. Where are they? Well, anyway, comes onto a 120 belt, which then comes into this smart splitter. This smart splitter sends the biomass as a bypass around this constructor, which is actually consuming the leaves at 60 per minute, which is making me 30 biomass, even though it says 60, because we're only sending 60 leaves in here right now. So we are making 30 biomass. We're mixing it with this 30 biomass, and then we... This whole line here is duplicated here to make 120 biomass going into this line, which then makes me solid biofuel. Then the solid biofuel comes into this storage, as well as the other ones from over here that's being produced, which then go into these automated biomass burners. And it's so weird that we can actually have inputs on these. And we'll even have that when 1.0 drops later this year. But I've just kind of noticed something. Why are you guys all not moving? What's going on here? Oh my god. Do I not know how to put belts down or something? I think I need to go through all of this and double check my whole system is actually operational because this doesn't look right to me. You're not receiving leaves. Why are you not receiving leaves? Oh, it's because you're blocked up with the biomass. Okay, right. Anyway. What? Oh my. What is going on? Bean! What is going on today? This could be a weird episode. I'm going to get away from this place before I start going bloody insane. So let's have a look what we can unlock in the hub and start working on our next possible project. So we do have glass walls we can still unlock. I have no rush to get this because I have no need for decorating right now. Plus, we need 1,000 stone, which I think we might have over at the bronze place that we set up last time. Um, but we could unlock the fix-it blueprints. We might as well. I've got the items for it. So let's unlock them. And in case we do come across anything we might want to make blueprints for, we might as well do it. So with that being said, what's on the next thing we can do? Fix it, More fix-it blueprints. Oh, this is tier two. Mark two ones. So this is... Designer dimensions is 48, 48, 48. So it's technically five in this. Maybe six. Could be six. Six by six. Potentially. We've also got advanced parts, which we need bronze frames and lead frames for. I feel like this is going to be important. I do need to grab 200 bronze plates, 200 bronze beams, and 200 bronze uh, copper bus bars. Advanced sorting, which is going to need zinc. And we know we need zinc for the reward system here because we need 400 of it. So we can unlock the awesome sink. And then we can check out what this awesome sink storage mark one is. Which I'm going to guess the... Oh yeah, the items in the last slot will automatically be converted to awesome sync points. That is pretty cool. And then across here we have the jump pads. The assembly, which is the smart plating, which we do need the bronze frames for. And then the smelting module, which gives us slag. Molten slag. And then concrete as a recipe. Well, technically it would be an alternate recipe, right? Because we already can make concrete. So let's unlock this. Let's select this as our milestone. And we do need, what was it again? Bronze plates, 200 copper bus boys. So let me go and get them. Okay, so we need you guys. And we need 200 of you. I might as well get a double stack. And then plates, wait, uh-oh. I don't have any plates. Uh, how many have I got in here? Oh, only 67. It's gonna take like maybe two minutes for me to get them. Darn it. So I might as well just go and get the copper bus boys, and then hopefully by the time I get them, we should be backed up on the plate so I can start unlocking that next hub part, so we can start making some some frames. <laughs> climb. Climb, climb, climb. Have you got bus boys? Bus boys, bus boys. Yes, we have them. I've got 200 of them now. Hopefully the plates are ready. Ooh. This is precisely why I left these ladders here. Just so I can jump off if I need to go to the hub and land here and not face palm the ground like I have done a few times now. 
You guys are definitely not going to be done yet, are you? Yeah, definitely not going to be done. 66. Sheesh. How many do I have? I have 136. Well, I guess I'm just going to sit here and wait for this to stack up. Okay, there we go. 80. More than enough than we actually need. I love how the auto saves in this playthrough are so quick right now. But how long will that last? Okay, so 200 in there, 200 in there, and 200 in there. Bada bing, bada boom. Advanced parts unlocked. We can now make frames, and we've also got the blueprint there as well. Which is this. This is the normal size. Yeah, that's the normal size. But we've also got another one, which is in here, tier 2, and then also here. And we've got enough to get that done. But we can't do that for another 2 minutes, 39 seconds. Okay, so a little progress has been made since the last time we spoke, which was around three seconds ago. Because, as you know, last time I was unlocking the stuff within the hub, like the Mark II blueprint, and unlocking um, the, the M for the zinc and all that kind of stuff. Well, I can confirm I have unlocked some of that stuff. I just basically had to handcraft uh, 50... Uh, bronze, these bronze things in here, bronze frames. I had to handcraft a few of them uh, to unlock the milestone. And I've got a few lead frames now by handcrafting them, which you guys didn't need to see. Also, what I've done is I've rerouted the copper from this building. So this floor now is now getting no copper because I want to double production. So I have brought in 120 iron, which is uh, iron, uh, sapphire which was getting sent to that building. And I've also, on this side of the factory, you might notice we've now got a few more miners. That is because I've got the copper from over here and over here, merging them to normal nodes into one line to give me another 120 line. So yes, we now have 240 sapphire ready for production. That is because if we head up onto this next floor, which I think I should be able to jump up here, <laughs> no, can't make that. And I've just made a sound I've never made before. Let me just grab some ladders, climb up here, and then show you what happened when I unlock the zinc stuff. So as you know, we already have the sorter. But inside the sorter now, there's not just one recipe, which was the rubite. We now have sapphire and stellatite. And the sapphire ore gives us crushed zinc. So we have crushed copper uh, as an output, crushed zinc, and crushed stone. This is from 120 crushed sapphire, which we are bringing in two. So that means we're going to have an output of 180 crushed copper, 120 zinc, and 40 crushed stone. But then on the other hand, we also have the stereotype, which I want to do this floor as the copper. The next floor we'll probably do as the iron, and then the floor above that we'll probably do as the rubite. So I want to double the production. I want to get more materials because we need reinforced plates. We also need uh, rotors. We're also needing like more stuff we can't really automate right now. And I do want to try and automate these at some point because having to handcraft these over and over again is a pain in my butt. And that requires reinforced plates. And it also requires tin sheets, which we already know we can automate. We've already done that. But reinforced plate is a bit of a if you know what I mean. The reason being is because I don't have, uh, I do have the assemblers. So if I unlock, go into the assembler, we can see, obviously I can make bronze frames and lead frames in here now, but reinforced plates require 30 wire and 20 iron plates and make us five reinforced iron plates. And with the production we're bringing in for 120 iron into that, we just don't have enough to make this or make it so we have enough reinforced plates for us to use as a pioneer to build stuff. I want to make at least 20 reinforced plates. The reason being, I want five to go into storage for me to use for building stuff. Then we also need, uh, we're also going to need it for the simple conveyor belts, which they require five. So it's a one-to-one -one from one assembler to another assembler to make this. And then uh, there is also something else. Is it? Yeah, here. Modular frames requires 10 iron plates as well which is a pain so that means we need at least four assemblers to make reinforced plates to give me a profit 
because obviously 10 will get consumed for frames, 10 uh, 5 will get consumed for the simple conveyors, and then also I need 5 for my own personal storage. But if I'm not mistaken, I don't think the rotors require it. No, they require copper bus boys and lead sheets. The bronze frames, however, require 60 bronze beams and 30 screws, and then the lead frames require 30 lead plates and 60 screws. So this and the bronze frame can actually be produced inside the bronze factory over there because bronze is being made over there, tin is being made over there, and I could just bring in an iron node from over there to then get some screws being automated, which I think we'll probably aim for on a later date. Because if I'm not mistaken, the space elevator, yeah, the space elevator requires 100 of them copper frames. Well, bronze frames. But back to the project at hand. So we're going to be looking at this. We want to look at this crushed copper, which we're going to be bringing in 200. So we want 90, we'll get 100 in crushed copper, we'll get zinc. And zinc is what we need for the awesome zinc stuff. And then I can unlock like the barriers, I can unlock doors, I can unlock walls, I can unlock alternate foundations, so I don't have to spend screws on these foundations and stuff. So let's start putting down what we need to. Okay, so I need a splitter there and I need a splitter here. So I've already put down the four crushes we're going to need because obviously crushes require uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, sapphorite, 60 per minute. We're bringing in 240, 120 per each line. And then we just need to get these, uh, well, with a Mark II. And we're just going to place you into here. And then we're going to put a Mark One going from there into there. And then we just need to bring this one down here like so. So bada bing, bada bosh. We then can get this in here. And then we can get you going into this splitter, into this crusher. So now we have 60 going into each of these lines. And then we now need to figure out what we want to do and merge all of these. So I'm thinking about, because we've got a simple, simple manifold here, I'm thinking we just grab ourselves a merger. Uh, we're going to place this uh, around here, like this. Take it up by two. I'm going to do that all for the stone inputs so i can just bring you up remove the bottom ones and then we're just going to grab ourselves a cheeky little lift snap that to the output and then into there and do this for all of these now that's done i could just need to bring this one over so let's uh, uh we are going to need you're outputting 60 right yeah you're outputting 60 so if we just get a belt to come along here then we know I can get a Mark 1 belt to come out of here, get you to come, say, halfway along this foundation, get you to lift up here to go into that, and then we're going to need a Mark 2. Uh, no, we don't, because it's 20 per each one, right? Yeah. So, Mark 1 into there. This now equals 60. So, from here, this will equal uh, 80. We're then, we'll then need a Mark 2 to come down here. So, that can just be left there for now which is just our stone. Now we need to look where we want to put down our, well, our sorters. And I'm thinking we put this, say about there, which gives us a little bit of gap here so we can bring in these belts. And then we're gonna get this one and do exactly the same. So we're just gonna place you there. And then we're just gonna get a Mark one belt. We're gonna bring that down here like so, and then get you to go into there. And then mark one from here. Oh, needs to come out one more. Oh my god. Oh my god. You into there. Then we do the same on this side. Then connect that up. And now we have the two sorters sorted. What I need to look at now is I need to get the stone to come out of here. Um, I'm going to raise this up, say to there, and then we're going to bring it along here because it lines straight up perfectly with that merger right there. So I'm just thinking we keep this high to connect to that line. That's now a 60, which means I need to upgrade that one actually to a Mark II. And then we do the same for this side. So that being 20... 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, which means that stone line now is at max belt capacity, 
of 120. So if we're going to mark one here as well, we take this out of here, lift, get it to turn, and then get you going into that merger just like that. Right, so I've just put the first smelter down and I am literally just setting it up now. We can build backwards because as you know with Satisfactory, you have to build backwards if you want to build clean. Uh, and that's the way the game makes you build. Um, because now I've got these constructors here because constructors obviously are a lot bigger than what smelters are. I can then decide because obviously we're going to be going... Um, three smelters to the right. So I actually need to extend this foundation along a little bit as well. So I need to extend that further along. I don't think it needs to be this long, but I can trim where need be. And we've got two more smelters. So that means we need four more constructors, which means I can go boom, 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 boom. And I can get these smelters and then just aim it here until it lines up with the one to the left and same with this one. And now I can just have the smelter, and no, spell, sm smelter, the splitter. And then I can do this for the rest of them. And then all I need to do with these, you just connect these up, put the splitter down here, and Bob is your uncle. And then we'll get something looking like this. So as we know, one sorter sends out 90 crushed copper, which then goes into these three smelters, because 90 divided by 30 is three. Then that's going to be making 45 ingots each, which then go into these first constructors, which is consuming iron plates at 30 per minute and iron rods at 15 per minute, equaling 45. And then we have these constructors on the front, which are making unique items, such as like copper wire and bus bars and all this kind of stuff. Okay, so all these constructors are making, you know, their own unique item. This is this side over here is basically a mirror image of what's happening over here. So the three smelters is one half. The other three smelters is the other half. So this one's making wire. This one's making pipes. This one's making cable. And then this one over here is making sheets. But on the opposite side, instead of it making sheets, I've actually made it to make bus bars. Then all of that then goes into storage here. You know, I've kind of, we've already kind of built copper. So it's kind of just the same copper setup we've been kind of building. But the main reason we want to do this is because out of these sorters, we have uh, the zinc being created, right? At 120 per minute. So the zinc from that sorter is merging into here with this sorter to give me this belt of 120 crushed zinc. So if we have a look at the zinc, we now need to go into another smelter. Well, let me if I place it down, which then make zinc ingots at 30 per minute. So we need four smelters to make 45 zinc ingots. So if we place one, two, three, four, then we're going to get a simple manifold here to go with a smelter going into the smelter splitter again i think i've said that twice this video then we get splitters to go into these we're gonna put a mark one belt here 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 there we're gonna then gonna need a mark two for here and a mark one there and then we just need to bring this down here actually i should oh yeah we're fine i put the splitter the right way connect you into there that's them receiving the uh, zinc. So we're going to grab that. Then I'm going to copy the settings and then paste that throughout these smelters. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to merge these two. So I'm going to merge these two ones here. And then I'm going to send it to you. And then this way, we're going to get this one to go inside here. So you are going into there. Like so. You're going into there. That's going to be a 60 line. And then we're going to do the same here like that mark one in there mark one in there oh no because i need to bring you out further don't i mark one to there you into there and then i'm going to put down a splitter here and there where then i can get a constructor can i go from here like that and i can just duplicate this three times here and then on this side do the same again one two three because as we know, we are bringing in 45, 45. That's going into a 90 here. I can't really merge all of these together because that'd be 180. So 45 plus 45 is 90 going this way. 30 is going to get consumed by this because if we go inside here, we can change this to zinc plates, which requires 30 per minute to 20 plates. And then I just need to grab another splitter, place that there with a mark one input, and then you to come along here. To turn into there and that with a full 90 consumed just make sure all these are connected i need to put a mark two in the middle there then we just need to duplicate this 
on this side, like so, and then we will then have zinc plates being produced, which means we can then finally, finally unlock the awesome zinc, which is definitely vital. But oh my god, why does it keep snapping one extra distance there? You to there, you to there. So then we can get all that done, and then I can unlock the awesome shop because the awesome shop and the resource sinkers and stuff especially the awesome sink and the awesome sink storage is going to be extremely vital to this playthrough just because of all the byproducts that we are creating and then i can just get all these merging together like this which then oh we need one more i can then just put into a storage container at the end here like that at 120 per minute because we are making two four six eight ten twelve so we're making 120 zincs per minute zinc plates per minute connect them all up to the manifold and then make sure we have that connected to the storage and we do then all we need to do is get all this powered and make sure it all runs and that's what i went and did with the odd exception of fixing a belt or fixing a power cable or fixing a recipe it is now all up and running and yes i have now finally unlocked the resource sink and the storage containers which actually require power which is super strange because people on the live stream have been going, wait, why are you connecting power poles to storage? That's because with these storages, these, let's for example say I fill it up real quick with just different items. Uh, you can see the end slot actually gets sunk in this awesome shop. So these items that are going in are just going into the void and making me coupons. So which is pretty cool, which is kind of like an end of line kind of system. Um, and then I can just kind of put all these back here. So once these storages get full, they'll actually, the last slot will then get sunk. So all the items can keep moving and doing what it needs to do to keep this 100% efficient. But now that we've got all this copper up, we've now got this zinc up. We've now got the, um, awesome shop up. We've now just, I've just thrown loads of items in there, which I didn't really need in my inventory. Just when I start making some coupons and now that we've got them i can unlock them and i've got 12 coupons to spend in the awesome shop so i can finally get my tools so we can start looking at decoration and all that kind of good stuff but we now need to start working on the iron first then start working on the uh tin on the top floor start looking into magnesium and start looking at just basically overhaul increasing the production because i don't know if i talked about this earlier and if i do I apologize it is because if we actually look into the uh sorter now we have the styrotite in here we've now got crushed magnesium and crushed magnesium goes into a crusher which then makes magnesium granules and then the magnesium granules go into a foundry into a recipe called sulfur free iron which then produces more yield for more for our iron ingots so we can then send the 90 crushed iron we get from the sorters into a uh, a foundry where we can then mix it with magnesium to give us a bigger yield for iron ingots which is what we're going to do for the iron floor because we need to make more reinforced plates we need to make frames we need to make them conveyor belts and all that kind of stuff and there's quite a few bits we need to do so with that being said we're going to end this video right here and i apologize it being a little bit shorter than what it normally is is because i'm kind of prepping videos right now because i'm away in the netherlands at the end of the month for twitchcon so if you're going to be there make sure you come and say hello i don't bite there's quite a few community members and all that kind of stuff i'm going to organize a satisfactory community meetup as well so if you're interested and you're there you live in the area make sure to come and say hello uh, and yeah check out my other content right here without further ado keep smiling and i'll see you in another video